What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and I've never done any sort of setup video. I mean, I've showed my setup before, but I've never done any sort of like tips or tricks or how to how to trick out your setup or whatever. I don't wanna, I don't wanna say pimp my setup. I don't, I don't want, I don't want Matt Philly to sue me. But I've never thought my setup was anything great, so I never really thought about really doing any sort of tips or tricks. But I'm gonna go ahead and try that today. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm not gonna start any like setup series or any of that crap. I'm not into that stuff. But a lot of people have asked me about my setup and uh, ways that they can maybe improve there. So I figured we'd go ahead and give that a shot. I mean, who knows, we'll see how it goes. Hey, I guess I can rap. Maybe I should go ahead and just use Jay-Z. The Lickmax 2 120 and 240 from Enermax is another awesome choice of AIO liquid coolers for gamers and enthusiasts without breaking the bank. Patented shunt channel technology provides extra layer of cooling capability. Click the link below to find out more. Now, obviously when it comes to setups, there are like an infinite amount of things that you could talk about. But today I'm gonna just focus on a few things that I think are what kind of make or break various setups. Now, obviously budget is gonna be a huge thing. So I'm not choosing like a price point. Everyone's around the country, everyone's around the world, different prices, different availabilities. So I'm just gonna kind of speak in generalities here. Gen generalities, generalities. I don't know if that's even a word, but you get what I'm trying to say, I think. Now I think where the bulk of your budget should honestly go is the desk. The desk itself can either make or break a setup. And one of the most common brands people use when it comes to desks is Ikea. Ikea is generally pretty decent quality, uh, depending on the desk you get fairly inexpensive and you can do some pretty custom things with it. Now my desk setup here that I get asked all the time, Jay, what desk are you using? Is the Ikea Gallant system with the birch tops. I also started the channel with a black Gallant system. These are actually all the same frames. I just changed the top. Kind of showing one of the cool things about Ikea is the fact that they are modular, at least some of them, like various other desks you can't, but like the Gallant system you could. Um, unfortunately, the Gallant system has been phased out and it's not available at Ikea anymore, at least here in the US. I don't know if it's still available in Europe. It is a European brand, it might be. But they did change the system with something else called the Beckant. Yeah, if you guys have, you guys have seen Deadpool, you know how they always make fun of the name, the names and stuff. You know, anything's better than the Clurin. But anyway, you, you know what I'm trying to say here. Unfortunately, the Gallant system is not available anymore. And what made the Gallant system nice was you could put different pieces together hook them together in the frame and make a giant desk if you want. My desk actually consists of three different parts of desks put together. That's how I got such a massive system here. And then I use another Gallant table on the other side for the test bench. That way everything matches. Now what kind of sucks about the new desk system from Ikea is the fact that they no longer lock together. They've got these kind of angular corners, which means they don't match up anymore which is very unfortunate. In fact, I don't think that there's ever been an outcrying amongst the gaming community or even the PC enthusiast community like there was when Ikea discontinued the Gallant and it was no longer available. People actually got really mad. Now, the main reason why I still recommend Ikea desks, even if you can't hook multiple together like I have shown with my desk, is the fact that they are adjustable. You can adjust the height, you can get different kinds of legs, A legs, T legs, you can get different color tops of the same style. And that's a big deal because if you don't, want a black desk and the desk you like only comes in black, well, that kind of sucks, right? But you can get these in birch, white, black, gray, all sorts of different colors, which is really cool. That way you can customize the look to the feel of your room and the overall setup you're going for. Nothing makes a setup look more cheesy than wires strewn everywhere. Now, fortunately, you can get different types of wire racks and such. Um, again, I'm gonna mention Ikea a lot. This is not an Ikea sponsored video by any means. It's just my stuff is all Ikea, I live near one. And so I go there when I want all of my stuff. But they have different wire racks available. They're very, very cheap. Um, the one that I'm using under here is, is actually no longer available. It was part of the Gallant system. Unfortunately, it's no longer available, but I liked it because it was big enough to not just put excess wire up there, but it also was big enough for me to even put my switch under there, a modem under there, power strips. It just goes on and on. So wire management is a big deal. Even if you don't have a rack system available, you can modify a lot of things to hold your cables. And that's what I would highly recommend in making your setup look better is find a way to hide your cables. Even if it means zip tying them to screws that you screw under the table, something to keep them out of the way and get extensions if you need them, because trust me, trying to deal with just the factory three meter cables that you get with a lot of your products are, is not long enough, especially if your desk or the tower is on the floor. 
But why would you put your tower on the floor? You wanna make your setup look awesome, you need your tower up on the desk because you want it to show, especially if you're a content creator. It makes really good backdrops for some YouTubers. But now that we've moved on to hardware, let's go ahead and talk about monitors because nothing makes a setup pop more than multi-monitor configurations. And if you look at any of the popular setup shows on YouTube, guys that are just sitting there critiquing people's setups, you'll find a, find a common denominator where most people with the best systems are using multi-panel configurations. But it's not just because it looks cool, but in cases like mine where I'm actually using all of that real estate when I'm editing, um, depending on what you do, if you're a programmer, if you're a photographer, if you're a video editor, it doesn't matter. All of that extra screen real estate actually helps. And if you're a live streamer, obviously it helps to have extra panels so you can monitor your live stream, have your game, have your chat. Uh, so it's function and form which is really important because some setups, depending if you go, if you go form over function, then you're kind of like the ricer of PC, which, which really kind of sucks because we don't want any of those race and race inspired cosmetic enhancements. We don't want any of that. We, we want function and form. That's the point of making your setup really pop. But if you do choose to go with a multi-panel configuration, consider going with some sort of a monitor stand that can hold all three of your panels. That way you only have one stand because it does look kind of cheesy when you have multiple bases on your desk, they take up real estate. Not only do they make your desk a little bit more cluttered with the bases sitting there, you can also use the space underneath your desk, kind of like I've done with my mix amp here uh, for my podcast mic, where I can slide stuff underneath the monitor and use up some of the space which would have otherwise been blocked by the bases of the monitor. So I'm using the ErgoTech uh, widescreen form edition here. Uh, I've done a review on this, you guys can find that on my channel, and it can hold uh, it advertises up to three 27 inch monitors, but it barely fits my 34 inch ultra wide in the middle and two 24 inch 1080p's on the side. Uh, so it, again, it barely fit, but I got it on the desk and it works and it looks pretty good. But it's adjustable on the sides, it's adjustable on the height, then you can even add a three plus one pole so that you can put a monitor up on top if you want. I actually ran that config for a while, um, but I kind of got tired of having the extra monitor up top. So I just ended up going simple with uh, the three monitors rather than the plus one. Now the next thing I think is something people often overlook and I was actually accused of that for quite a bit when I first moved into this house and that is the walls. Having bare walls is unfortunately a way to make your room look cold, kind of empty and just echoey for one, um, but it just takes away from the overall setup. You want to tie your wall decor into your setup as best as you can. Now in here, just recently, I put up all of these foam base traps in all the corners of my room and then used alternating uh, orientation of one foot squared uh, foam pieces on the wall to deal with a lot of the echo. If you guys have noticed over the last several weeks, my audio has improved in this channel and there's a lot less echo. It's because I'm using a better mic. I'm also no longer using a lav mic, as you can see. But I also made a pattern on the wall, which is very common. A lot of YouTube channels are doing that now where again, it's function and form. You can take something that's necessary and could have otherwise been ugly and make it look better um, by kind of doing different shapes and stuff. Now I might consider filling in the blank spaces there with another color. Um, so it kind of is like a checker pattern. Also a very common thing that people do. Um, so I'm sort of searching for a way to make mine look a little more unique, a little bit more separated from the crowd. I'm not sure yet how I'm gonna do that. Uh, but regardless, if you guys are not content creators and you don't need to deal with the echo and stuff, then all you've got to do is put pictures on the wall. Go down to your nearest Hobby Lobby or something, get some nice pictures if you're into cars or whatever. They've got all sorts of different stuff there that you can hang on the wall um, that's going to fit your hobbies and just tie it all in. If you've got a dark colored desk, go with dark colored frames. If you've got a light colored desk, go with light colored frames, but tie it all in because you want to make it inviting and just awesome. It, it doesn't matter if you're making videos. If you walk into the room, you want to walk in and just kind of feel like, ah, this is my space, because that's what setups are all about. Now, the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is actually the most important thing, and that being lighting. You guys know that all the best setup winners and all these setup shows have custom RGB lighting. Now, I head down to Lowe's. Yes, Lowe's, not Home Depot, but I think Home Depot carry these as well, and got for uh, 40 bucks, you can get these LED strips that are adhesive. You can stick them to the back of the corners of the desk. You can stick them to the back of the monitors and you can customize the lighting. But RGB is important because let's say, like right now I've got the blue going on the desk and I've got white going behind the monitors because I used strips and extensions. So I probably have about $100 worth of LED lights here where I can control different colors behind the monitors and different colors on the desk. So for instance, if I want to switch the desk to red, uh, actually the desk thing is over there. I can switch it to red, as you can see, or I can switch it to white or green, 
whatever I want to be. You can even do, you know, girly colors, pink, whatever. But that's what's cool. You can change your colors and your mood based on what you want. Again, lighting is a huge deal, especially if you're going to do a lot of stuff in the dark. Um, yeah, th there's just kind of an endless amount of things that you can do when it comes to lighting. But lighting is really what makes your setup pop. You can do a lot of this for under a hundred bucks, depending on the size of your setup. Because I've got a huge desk, I needed two of the lighting kits. Um, so I got one lighting kit and an extension piece. So I had four extra feet of LED strips for the desk. And I've got one kit for the monitors themselves. Now the foam can be kind of expensive. If you're a content creator, the foam can add up. I've got about $400 worth of sound foam in here. Most of that being the base traps. The base traps in the corners, like, like that guy right there, are actually what cut down the echo the most. The other bits on there are just a little bit of extra echo grab, um, and they also help with some of the reverb. Now, those are just four or five of my favorite things to do when it comes to making your system really look good. Uh, if you think I missed something, put it down in the comments. What would you do, or what have you done to your setup so others can read and get ideas? Most people base their setups on some sort of influence. They saw someone else's they thought looked really cool, so they kind of took it and twisted it to be their own kind of a design. So let me know, guys. Sound off in the comments. Head on over to Twitter and let other people know what you think would make an awesome setup. Anyway, guys, time to get out of here. I haven't touched on the whole setup thing a whole lot. Let me know what you guys think. If you thought uh, the setup looks all right, I think it's kind of hit and miss. Some people like the foam on the wall. Some people don't. I'm kind of stuck. I'm a content creator in a small room. I've got to deal with the echo. So yeah, I, I, I want to play around with it a little bit more, but that's what's kind of cool about the setups is just making it, just tweaking it until it's just right. Also, one other thing, it's going to be kind of an interesting week considering by the time you guys see this video, Jerry will already be here visiting me until uh, the weekend. We are hoping to do a fan meetup in the LA area this Saturday, July 9th, I think it is. And uh, we'll put out information on Twitter. So make sure you guys are following over there if you want to come meet up. Um, again, Twitter's the best place to get a hold of us, so you should be following. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video.